full throttle. See what we can get out of this thing. I built another e-bike. This one is a front wheel drive, 1800 watt. So this one's definitely my favorite out of all the bikes I've built so far. Um, it has the most power, so I don't have to worry about any issues with the bearing. It's a solid old steel frame bike. So the motor's not super heavy, but with all the steel, the motor controller and all the steel in the front, chain is too small. We're going to have to lengthen that. So there's a bit of weight up there. And then of course these batteries really weigh it down. I'm using four lead acid 22 amp hour batteries. Uh, yes, they are heavy, but I do get a pretty good range out of them. So Until I switch these batteries out to lithium iron phosphate, um, they work fine. Of course the bike was a free find. So I bought the motor kit and the free wheel bearing and the sprocket and chain. And then of course the batteries. Motor and controller. So negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way along. Before you turn on your motor, you should always give it a spin to see if it's moving freely because you don't, you don't want to fry the controller if there's something wrong with the motor. Everything looks good. So I just made the carrier out of scrap bed steel, of course. And the crate was a free find as well. I've been pulling people with it. So if we're going on a long trip, I put the strap out and I can tow people if their batteries go dead. This one's better than my 1800 watt rear drive. And I'll tell you why. So I'm using a rear wheel of a bike on the front. Now, this works really well because I did not have to weld the free wheel bearing onto the hub. So it's just threaded on and it works perfectly. So there's no issues of the bearing tracking off the hub. So my other bike, unfortunately, I was having issues with the bearing and it wasn't my welds that were breaking. It was actually the hub was shearing off. Unfortunately, the free wheel that I welded onto the hub of this bicycle wheel stripped off. Luckily, it didn't happen while I was on a ride. I was actually just leaving the yard and hit the throttle and then it just stripped it. This has happened twice now. I just want to show you what, what's actually happened. So the free wheel is welded right onto the hub like this. So this is the piece where the ball bearings are actually in. It's not my welds. It comes off like that and this piece is still onto the, the freewheel. This is what you end up having. It's just stripped right off of here. It's very thin. So I went on a fairly long trip, about 40 kilometers, and the bike worked really well. I've never rode along here. Truly am in the middle of nowhere.
That's for sure. There is nothing. There is absolutely nothing. And we got a road here. I hope that's not a highway. Will I make 40 kilometers distance? So why do I use these brushless chain drive motors instead of just using a hub motor? So where I am, hub motors are way more expensive than these motor kits. All right, so with the front wheel drive bike, you can't, I can't really have suspension because it'd be really hard to mount the motor to a wheel with suspension. Now, of course, hub motor is the only way to go, but I don't use hub motors. I don't use hub motors because of their cost. That's the only reason, but I'm gonna make a hub motor bike one day. It's just right now, this is the most economical way for me to build these bikes. So I can get about 40 kilometers on the batteries and that's without pedaling. These sealed lead acid batteries are not always maintenance free. Let me talk a little bit about this. These are 22 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries. So they're SLA batteries. I have them in series to have my 48 volts. Quite heavy, but they do provide a fairly good amount of range. So I use these chargers here. They're a pulse charge. Either I'll charge them individually, just clip them on to one of these. So I charge them in the AGM set because these are a glass mat type battery. Sometimes I use a 48 volt e-bike charge. I think charging them individually is the way to go and especially use a like a pulse charger like this one because it gives them a nice deep charge so with these sealed lead acid batteries you're never supposed to do anything to them they're supposed to function their entire life when their service life is up their cycle life is done then you just replace them but that's not always the case with these batteries and certain circumstances can come up and cause them to need maintenance i noticed basically the second year into the having these that the range was starting to drop from getting about 40 kilometers down to basically 10. And it got so bad that that I could barely even get down the road. It just had no power at all. The motor was, was cogging. And of course I put a meter on and tested them. This one's 13, 13, 12.9, and this one was 12.6. So right away I figured there's gotta be something wrong with this one. Uh, but the voltage 12.6 isn't too bad. So the voltage was just popping back up like normal. But what I had to do is a load test. So load test, I just put the meter on and then I put the motor, uh, engage the motor with a wheel on the, on the ground and I watched the voltage drop. These ones barely even moved and this one dropped down to like nothing, like eight volts. So I knew that, th that there was an issue with this battery. I basically rode the bike uh, 40 times maybe. That's nothing. It should get a lot more than that when, it, when that happens. So the first thing I did when, when I discovered the low uh, current is I took off this cover here. So I'll show, I'll show in another little clip here. Right away, I knew there was an issue, but these are new batteries. Once this re is removed, then I can look at the cell caps. When I looked at these little plugs, they were sucked in really, really deep. So there's the indication that the cell is dried out. It's completely sucked. And you can hear it. So the next thing I checked was when I popped the cap off, I looked down inside and I noticed it was very dry. This is a plate from a battery and it looked like that. It looked very dry. Now that's not what you want to see. So you actually want to see it a little wet in there, like the, the, the fiberglass battery. So I'm showing in this clip, so adding water to water. another battery, not this particular one because I don't have that footage. This is number two. It's gonna take quite a bit to actually absorb down. Basically, once I added the water and I charged it, then it started coming back to life. After I checked it, it was still a little dry, so I added a little more water. The best thing to do is add a small amount of water each time uh, to every cell, to the ones that were dry and then charge it again, cycle it, and don't add too much water. I'm gonna hydrate it uh, enough to, to get it working again. Before it was dry as a bone. This one, I don't know if I can see that, but 
so now there's a little moisture if, it, if I look at the fiberglass separator and it's got a, like a shiny wet look to it I've been sitting for a few hours off the charger so check the standing voltage okay so it's 13.1 so it's it's holding a nice voltage <laughs> About 53 is the top speed. That's about exactly the same as the other bike. So from the front wheel drive to the rear drive, they're exactly the same speed. There's no speed difference. <laughs> 